Hi everyone and welcome to our Friday TNT. I can't believe it's the uh, the end of the week. Now tomorrow we've got our live program. That means that you and me and Nick, here we in tomorrow, we can get together for a whole hour from 9 a.m. Thai time. We'd love you to join in. I mean, we've got a whole lot of regulars and we love seeing them, but it'd be great to have some new faces in there as well. Asking questions, adding comments, arguing, disagreeing. So grab a cup of something or a glass of water and join us at 9 a.m. tomorrow Thai time then on Sundays uploaded at 9 a.m. is our latest edition of grumpy old men me and Steve all right let's get started on today's program we go to the Bangkok Post and the TAT festival targets four key regions well actually this is a Songkran festival but these are events organized by the TAT so if you're thinking of places to go if you want a bit more of a family experience then these might be for you the tourism authority of Thailand good friends of TNT will run a series of events dubbed Water Festival 2023 in four regions between April the 13th and the 16th in conjunction with Thai Beverage well I suppose we've got to have a sponsor don't we And just going on, the chairman of the organising committee says the goal is to promote traditional culture, elevate the community, not sure what that means, and gunning to have Thailand Songkran Festival added to the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage List. Well, there are two layers to Songkran. There's the traditional Songkran, then there's the party Songkran. I think it's the traditional one they're trying to get included with UNESCO. The events will be organised in Bangkok, Chiang Mai and Lampum in the north, Udon Thani and Konkan in the northeast and Phuket in the south. In Bangkok, they'll take place at landmarks along the Chao Phraya. A procession of Buddha images along the river will be among the highlights along with the ancient markets and other forms of entertainment. The Chao Phraya express boat will offer free rides at 11 piers from 8.30am to 5pm. And then it's got uh, events there up north in Lampun, Udon Thani, Konkan and Phuket. So obviously aiming at the uh, the key tourist locations and with opportunities to, to run these sort of more traditional family style events. So that article's in the Bangkok Post if you'd like to have a read about uh, those events being run in those uh, four key regions by the TAT around Thailand. Heading now to ASEAN now, and the Royal Thai Police Chief says people will be allowed to ride in the back of pickups at Songkran 2023, but only four. So you know the scene, the family pickup loaded up to the hilt and the suspension down to the last spring, usually with a great big bucket of iced water in the back, everybody having a good time. Pre-pandemic, a ban was ordered, but the Royal Thai Police, in their infinite wisdom, decided not to do anything about it. And the police chief said a meeting's been held and it was decided to allow people to ride in the back of pickups, but only four at a time. Yeah, right. And the police chief also said that everything would be done over the so-called seven deadly days to ensure the safety of the public. And so we, we note that Songkran is the worst time of the year for, for the road toll in Thailand. It's not just the 13th of April that's the problem. It's the lead up time, the people heading back home, the actual celebrations that sometimes can go two or three days. And then there's the heading back uh, to their work. Uh, this is what we usually see in relation to pickups. Uh, that one, they must have gone to a lot of work to seal that particular backup, but everybody looking like they're having fun. Let's see, one, two, yeah, only four people there. And, oh, yeah, one, two, three, oh, yeah, only four people there in those pickups as they're storming along the roads uh, enjoying Songkran. And then one, two, three, yeah, only four people in that pickup as well. And let's, yeah, only four in that one as well. So, yes, good to see everybody there complying with the rules as we head up to Songkran. What are you doing for Songkran this year? Year. It's only two weeks away and it's nearly here. Uh, big thanks to Five Star Marine, speaking of Songkran. Now, the reason that I'm not out on their boat this week is because they're just so damn busy, they literally can't fit me on a boat. So I probably won't be going until after Songkran now because they're just so damn busy. Glad they're busy, but sorry that I haven't been able to get out on a boat and uh, take you with me, but I will. There's a link in the description to Five Star Marine, somewhere down there. And while you're at it, please subscribe to the channel.
This is the TNT program. It's Friday. It's the 31st of March. So it is indeed the last day of the 45-day visa waiver. Last October, they decided to lengthen the 30-day visa waiver to 45 days and that finishes today now there was talk from the tourism ministry and also from the tat that they would propose to lengthen it to the end of this year but really since they proposed that uh, back in december and january nothing's been discussed at the moment all the politicians are running around trying to make sure they get re-voted back into power uh, in the election in may But for now, there's been nothing in the media whatsoever except a whole lot of speculation, including from us whether it would happen or not. But here we are on the last day. Nothing's been said, well, as of this time of the morning. So uh, it looks like from tomorrow, we're back to 30 days on the visa waiver. Now, let's just go next door and see what's happening there. And Vietnam is seeking to ease visa requirements to boost foreign tourist numbers. Among the changes being discussed is increasing the duration of e-visa recipients to 45 days as well as increasing the list of countries for visa exemption. Vietnam's government seeking to relax visa requirements to woo more foreign visitors into the country and boost the tourism industry. And they're also looking at more visa waivers to foreign tourists, expanding the e-visa program and increasing the duration of stays for visitors. And Vietnam expects to handle 110 million domestic and foreign tourists in 2023. Eight million of those will be coming from overseas. And that's an increase from the 3.7 million last year, but still shy of the 18 million foreign visitors in 2019. So Vietnam back in 2019 was getting almost half the, uh, the same number of tourists as were coming to Thailand. So they've been catching up very quickly indeed. Uh, they're looking at increasing the list of countries for visa exemption. The Vietnamese government plans to waive visas for more countries. Currently, that's 162 countries for Malaysia, 157 for the Philippines, and 68 for Thailand. I thought it was 64, but they're saying 68 in this article. And the government offers e-visas for up to 80 nations without the need to go through a guarantor agency or organisation. Used to be a time where you had to get a letter of invitation or guarantee if you were going to Vietnam. But things slowly opening up there. For tourists anyway, for long stays, uh, Vietnam is a bit of a hard bargain at the moment. They really don't have any, any equivalent of a thing like a retirement visa. Uh, That all came from AsianBriefing.com and the headline there, Vietnam to ease visa requirements to boost the tourism industry. Let's come back to Thailand. We go to NationThailand.com. Prayut bemoans field burning as Chiang Mai tops the world pollution index again. As Chiang Mai residents choke under the world's worst air pollution, the PM's promised action on smog, but admitted efforts to prevent burning fields that feed it had failed. And Chiang Mai, beautiful, peaceful, mountainous, green, verdant Chiang Mai, has topped the air pollution rankings for world cities over the past week, according to IQ Air. Let's check with IQ Air. And it's pretty much been like this for the whole week. And I've underlined Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai and Luang Prabang there in Laos. And you can see there Chiang Mai again, number one in the world rankings Uh, city with the worst quality air in the world. Most of the fire activity we can see there right in the north of Laos, very, very close to the border of Thailand. Let's go to the NASA fire maps. And once again, we can see the whole north of Thailand, northern Laos and northwestern uh, Myanmar lit up like a Christmas tree. And that's the current fires, the live fires that are lit So that information freely available on the internet. And yes, the Thai government can actually also log on to those websites. The article goes on to say that the seasonal smog levels are 11 times higher than the national safe limit. And I noted the other day that that safe limit is twice what the World Health Organization calls safe. So in fact, it's 22 times the World Health Organization safe limit. And hospitals across the north are also reporting high numbers of patients seeking treatment for respiratory conditions. 
On Wednesday this week, Prayut, who's the caretaker Prime Minister, and yes, there's an election on the way, sought to calm growing public anger over the pollution crisis by reassuring people that the issue is still being handled as a national agenda. He said the government has set no burning time frames in each province to prevent farmers torching their fields at the same time. The satellite images, as we've just seen, show northern Thailand and neighbouring Myanmar and Laos lit up with thousands of hotspot fires as farmers clear their fields. So the big difference this year is that the mainstream media in Thailand are reporting the facts about this issue and they're not just uh, parroting comments made by public servants saying that the cause was belching diesel buses or Chinese temples lighting up joysticks and all sorts of other rubbish. So they're actually reporting the real problem this year, and I think that's a big change in the way that the government is being forced to tackle this problem head on. Meanwhile, environmental campaigners say much of the burning is done by farmers contracted by agribusiness conglomerates that operate in Thailand and over the border. Again, exactly what the problem is. For small farms, burning is also the cheapest way of clearing the fields. And speaking of fires, Associated Press reporting that Thailand uses helicopters to fight mountain wildfires. Thai authorities used helicopters yesterday to try and contain a fire that overnight engulfed two mountains on largely undeveloped forest land in a province northeast of the capital of Bangkok. It was in Nakhon Nayok about 114 kilometres northeast of Bangkok, but firefighters could not directly tackle it because the mountains are too steep to safely climb. And the provincial governor said after reviewing the situation, since it's at a mountaintop, we had to retreat to stand by and convene over what we could do. At least 10 firefighting vehicles were dispatched to battle the blaze and they were joined yesterday afternoon by at least two helicopters which surveyed the situation and dumped water. And the governor said it was initially estimated the fire could be brought under control within five days, but that he would try and do it in just three. Good luck fighting that fire. Move on to our next story today, and this is from Thailand Dash Business Dash News. Thai exports contracted for a fifth straight month in February. If you can see that headline with all the uh, visual graffiti in the background, the value of Thai merchandise exports in February 2023 contracted nearly 5% year on year, marking a five month consecutive contraction. Exports to the US and Europe 28. Is Europe 28 a sort of designated trade zone? Is it part of the EU? Or is it just a typo? You might like to help me with that one. It worsened as economic conditions and uncertainty increased. Meanwhile, exports to China shrank less. In February, imports rose 1.1% from a year earlier, resulting in a trade deficit of US 1.1 billion for the month. So a fifth consecutive month of contraction in exports for Thailand. Moving on to this story from Scand Asia, A Swedish man suspected of running a sex network in Thailand has been sentenced to prison. From his parents' home in Stockholm, a Swedish man controlled a network that deceived underage girls in Thailand to send nude photos and videos of themselves, material that was later resold to thousands on social media. And good heavens, there's a link there. Uh, No, I'm not going to click that link. The Swedish man's now been sentenced to four years and six months in prison for his crimes. The business was traced to a property in Stockholm where the man was arrested. The material consisted of nearly 75,000 images, 20,000 films, 80 images and 400 films that are judged to be particularly reckless. The now convicted man is set to have collected over 2 million Swedish kroner. He's been sentenced for aggravated child pornography, aggravated money laundering, aggravated unlawful invasion of privacy, unlawful portrayal of violence. He must also pay nearly 1 million Swedish kroner in damages to six plaintiffs. That reported by Scanned Asia. And from Thai PBS World, Van Gogh Alive arrives in Bangkok. Van Gogh, Van Gogh, whatever you want. I'm saying Van Gogh, and that's where we'll leave that. And from today, the world-renowned Van Gogh Live exhibition will open its doors at Icon Siam in Bangkok, offering visitors the most immersive and highly attended art experience in the world. 
So because Five Star Marine have postponed my visit out onto Pangna Bay next week, I think I'll head up to Bangkok and have a look at that and uh, looking forward to it. Van Gogh Live is a multimedia art exhibition that brings the work of Vincent Van Gogh to life through digital technology. It was created by the Australian company Grant Exhibitions and has since travelled to over 80 cities around the world, captivating millions of visitors. The exhibition is a unique and immersive experience which combines high-resolution digital projections of Van Gogh's paintings with music and interactive display. I just found a few photos just to give you a bit of an idea what it looks like. You get to walk amongst the paintings and uh, there's projections and there's music and lighting and beautifully presented and, as they say, very immersive. And since its original creation back in 2008, Van Gogh Alive has been the most visited multi-sensory experience in the world. This blockbuster exhibit, which celebrates the life and work of Vincent van Gogh, takes guests on a mind-blowing journey through the Dutch painter's life and art. And they're not paying me to promote this, but uh, I think I should because it's something definitely worth visiting if you're in Thailand. Van Gogh Alive from the 31st of March on the 6th floor of Icon Siam, just there on the west side of the Chao Phraya River. So look forward to seeing that. Hope you're a bit more up to date with some of the stories around Thailand. Thanks for watching this week. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. We're back here tomorrow with Nick, 9am Thai time. Please join us. Everybody's welcome. And then on Sunday, we've got Grumpy Old Men with Steve. But uh, if I don't see you until next week, have a fantastic weekend. And thanks for watching.